Hi, this is Anthea West, and this is Redraw. This is a show where I take drawings from old sketchbooks that I found in my office, and I redraw them. And I hope to hope to hope to hope to hope that they look a lot lot better. This whole series kind of came about because re did my home office like completely redid it several times nicer you can actually find a video of it on my youtube somewhere and i just kind of realized like wow i still have so much of my old artwork in here hidden away in old sketchbooks uh that would have been 13 or before so i was really quite happy to actually find these kind of little treasure troves of old drawings as i actually thought i lost quite a lot of them when I was, ooh, I don't know, 15 or 16, I got really, really kind of anxious and upset with my level of drawing. So I actually like destroyed a lot of my old drawings. And I still really, I really, really regret that to this day. Because there's just so much of me that I'm lost that I just threw away. I'm actually quite happy that I still have like such a big treasure trove of old drawings. So uh, let's just get down to it. I found three drawings and I put those up on a poll on my Twitter and then you lot all picked which drawing I was going to redraw. So the drawing that got, re that got picked was the drawing of Little Ballerina Girl with Monster. So I was actually really glad this one got picked because I know I can actually uh, talk about this a lot more. Like the first thing that I thought when I looked at this drawing was that, oh gosh, the, the, the gap tooth with the dimples looks really, really cute. And I had to keep that when I redrew uh, this character. I thought it was a really nice touch. So, you know, good on me, past me. <laughs> For this concept here, you can see that at the moment I'm redrawing, I'm kind of like redesigning the monster. I'm not quite sure what I was going for originally, but for now what I really liked was that it's basically something that has no tangible shape, so it's keep giving itself a shape by draping a big cloak or a blanket over itself. And I think in the original drawing, the hands and the mask were part of its body, but I actually really enjoyed the idea of that the mask and the hands are just things that they p it picked up to make it look, give it to more human shape so it could like communicate. So the mask went from just being a mask stuck on the face to a mask that's actually on a stick and it's, it holds the mask to make it look like it's talking to you. And the hands, I changed those to like floating gloves. So it, it doesn't actually have hands, it just has gloves. And I really quite like the idea. Also, I really like theatre masks. The really old ones, you know, the smiling and the sad one. So I'd love to think that this creature would have the two masks. So one side's the happy mask and one side's the sad mask. So it can like communicate its feelings better. With this concept, this girl and this creature and everything, I actually do have a backstory to it, which is why I'm quite happy this one was the one that won the poll originally. So she, this is like the child version of a character from a story that I thought of like uh, back in college, I think. These are, I think, I think these are early college drawings. Uh, so that would have been, when did I graduate? 2014, so this would have been about, um, this might have been 2010, 2011, 2012? Oof, such a long time ago. Sorry, I'm just contemplating my life suddenly. Character here, the story is basically when she's much older. So the concept is that she doesn't, her, like her ability to like feel emotions and a lot of her memories were stolen by something. And then you later learn it was this thing. So she can no longer, she can just, she no longer, she's able to feel emotions she can't remember anything before that point of where her emotion got stolen so she doesn't know who did it or who she was beforehand or what she was doing but i think i think i have her here at about 11 because she's wearing she's on her tiptoes there so uh she's wearing point shoes and i'm actually not quite sure at what age a ballerina starts wearing point shoes and starts walking on point Ideally, you start training as a ballet dancer kind of young at like, I don't know, six or seven or something like that. So I think at 11, 
it's plausible that you'd start walking on point. When I say, like again, when I'm saying on point, I I mean that she's walking on her tiptoes. I, I'm fairly certain that's the term. I'm not talking about her clothing being on point. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm not, so I'm fairly certain she, this is still kind of accurate that she's on the tiptoes, but you know, whatever, we won't worry about it now. So yeah, so her older self, has no emotion so obviously this is her before that she was finishing uh, her ballet class and she's a, like she loves dancing she loves ballet but she's still like a very very rambunctious little kid uh, so after dance class she ran off into like the rain she like loves the rain and she loves just and she basically just had her own little dance session out in the rain messing in the mud that's why she's barefoot and She's covered in mud because she was dancing and playing her out in the rain. While she was like, she's having a grand old time, laughing, playing, whatever. And while she's doing this, this creature, monster, whatever, doesn't sneak up on her, but it, it makes like barely any sound. It's literally just a kind of floating cloak. So it came up behind her and asked her if, it asks her, uh, can I have your happiness? And now obviously that seems like a threat. I really do enjoy the scene of seeing this girl looking up at this weird ass being having it ask her can I have your happiness and she's kind of like like I have her in the drawing here that she looks scared but I'm, I was hoping to convey more that she's shocked I kind of tweak her expression a bit more because I don't want her to look terrified I want her to more shocked because this thing pretty much snuck up behind her while she's was playing about so she didn't even notice it but i like the image of this kid in the rain looking up this creature this creature asking her can i have your happiness and she's just like um hi because i think like a scene like that like it, it adds a bit of mystery to the character's background you see just this short little scene and you hear the rain and you hear these those words uh say sounding out and then you're like oh what's happening here and it's just this kind of this is the mystery background scene that i always imagine when i think of when i thought of this uh plot yeah so it asks her can you have your happiness and i think it's supposed to give it, the audience a sense of oh actually ooh, this is bad this is bad scary stranger danger time it's not bad scary stranger danger time i promise it's see with these creatures they themselves also cannot feel emotions at all i think that makes them obviously not sad because they can't be sad but they know that something's missing and they're they're kind of like jealous of humans that they're able to feel this so i think some of them just kind of take the emotions away from people so they can feel them themselves but i think a lot of them don't a lot of them kind of ask for them so what they're able to do is that they can take a moment it, ta it just takes like that moment of feeling that you're having so it's asking her if you could have that happiness that joy that she was feeling in that moment while she was like dancing and frolicking in the rain he wants to feel that and you can see that you can see now actually that i've added a lot of cracks and stuff into the mask this is the way that this creature was actually dying at this point and it wasn't, again, it can't, I don't think it could feel scared, but it knows its end is coming and it wants to be comforted. So it wants to feel that joy she was feeling for its last moments. So it's, ask, so it ask, it's asking her politely, can I have that moment of your happiness before I die, basically? This girl was like, I don't have a name for her. I think I might have had a name for her one of the time. And I don't know, I sh I like Shen keeps coming to mind, but I think that might have been because I was just working on the other video when I talked about a character who's also called Shen. So she can't be called Shen, That's that name's taken. So I don't know. Put down in the comments what name she should have. A nice name. So this girl's like, yeah, sure. Because it only wants that moment it doesn't want all of her happiness obviously so she's like yeah no you know what harm can that be i guess maybe she feels pity for it that it's going to 
die a lonely death basically she allows it to take that moment of happiness that she was feeling but and there's always a but with these stories it died halfway through taking away that moment so it accidentally takes out all of her emotions and her memories to that point so it dies and pretty much her, her ability to feel emotions and her memories evaporate right there and then so it's dead and all that stuff behind is just a puddle of a cloak and a mask and she's left with nothing she's pretty much an empty shell but because of this transfer with this being she now has the same impulse to want and steal emotions from other people as well as the say that the creatures do so that's it that's all she has is that want that impulse to go out and steal people's emotions and I know this sounds like I'm describing a bad guy but she meets a person later that kind of teaches her that fine you can feel of this but you have to have rules to yourself and you have to follow these rules or you'll just become a monster yourself so she picks these rules she follows these rules and stuff happens I'm not gonna get into it that's probably a different video but um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed redrawing this drawing. Um, I really, uh, especially this last drawing, the last main drawing here. Uh, and I'm putting them side by side, side by side here just to compare the difference in the drawing. So obviously the design for both of them, I think has improved quite a lot, especially the one for the monster. Uh, her pose is a lot more active and a lot more fluid. Um, I think with a lot of the design touches that I added, I think tells a story like the mud on her feet, the cracks in his mask, uh, the rain. I think that all just really adds to a much adds to a story. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want to go too overboard with this video. If you'd like to join me in redrawing this image or an older image of your own, you can follow me on Twitter at Anthea West, all one word, or Instagram at Anthea underscore West, and use the hashtag redraw with Anthea. Uh, then I'd love to like display your images in the next redraw episode. I think that would just be a fun little community thing to do. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And also head on over to my Patreon for some bonus content, like seeing what the ballerina girl looks like as an adult. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!